What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the simulator series. In this episode, we're going to be going over how stats are displayed in our shop because we did sort of make some mistakes before. So we're going to be fixing those mistakes and then also improving the GUI slightly. As always, if this video does help you guys out or you do enjoy it, make sure you smash the like button, also hit the subscribe button and turn the post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I do have a Patreon if you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I make in this episode. There's a link down below in the description, you guys go check it out. With that being said, let's get into it. So starting off, let's take a look at how our stats are actually set up for all of our different items in our simulator. If we click on the item, we can then see our stats displayed in this info section right here. And we can see plus three food, which is the stat for the specific item. And then below that is the cost of the specific item. Now, if we swap to DNA and click on this, we can see plus two food. So it seems like DNA shares the exact same stat as food, but it actually doesn't and it shouldn't. So that's what we really want to change here is this specific stat right here. Now, that might be a little bit confusing but let's take a look at how eating simulator has their setup so if we look at food and we click on an item we can see that they have plus one food stat so that's how we have for our food as well then when we go click on dna and we can see it offers a different stat and this stat that they're offering right here is the maximum amount of food that you can actually hold so if we equip this item for example we can see that our max amount of food that we can actually hold is now down to 95 and the rank stat is actually completely fine we don't need to adjust that at all because we actually did get that completely correct so let's just recap real quick the food items that we buy should increase our food stat. The DNA that we purchase should increase our max food stat. And then our ranks increase a couple of different multipliers, which we'll handle later. So now that we fully understand that, once again, looking at our food stat and our DNA stat, they both offer the exact same stat and we need to change that. And the way to do this is we want to go into our configs. And our configs are stored inside of the replicated storage and inside of the config folder. So let's go ahead and open up the tool config, open up the rank config and the DNA config as well. When we look at the tool config, or if we look at any of these configs, we can see each of them have a specific property for their sort of stat. So if we look at rank config, this stat is going to be the multiplier. If we look at DNA config, the stat for this item type is food. And if we look at tool config, the stat that this item offers is also food as well. Now that's not bad. And we could actually continue to use this. But of course, what we would then do is change the DNA config from food to say max food, for example, rather than doing that, though, since we know that each of these different item types all offer one specific stat, and we know what stat is offered by each of those item types because the stats are different for every item type. Let's just go ahead and rename all of their specific stats like food, food, and multiplier to literally just the word stat. And this might be confusing for you, but of course I'll get further into detail and explain why we're going to do that. So to easily do this, highlight food, hit control H, and then instead of food, we're going to say stat, and then we could go ahead and replace all. We'll do that for DNA as well. And then for the rank and fig as well. So there we go. Now our stat is no longer called multiplier or food. They're all just labeled stats in each of the different configs. Now that we adjust all the config files, we also want to adjust the GUI as well. Let's go inside of our manager, which is of course inside of our starter GUI, the shop folder, and then we have the manager right here. Inside of here, let's locate the new function, and we want to look inside of our for loop. So inside of here, we can see right here, we set the meta table for the object, and then we start setting the properties for the object as well. So we can see right here, we have the food property that we're no longer using, so we can go ahead and delete that. We also have the multiplier property as well, and what we're going to do instead of deleting this, we are going to change this from multiplier to stat. So that we can hold the item specific stat information right there. Now, the next thing that we also need to make sure that we do is any time that we actually use the food property, we want to find that inside of this file because we also have to adjust the systems which use food so that they work with our new system that we're creating. So we can control F and look for dot food because that's how we know we're calling the food property. And then we can see right here on line 171 inside of the click function, we can see that we're using the food property right here. So we can see we're using the food and multiplier property to set the text for the info stat and also for the info price as well. Rather than creating the if statements when we're actually setting the value to something, we're going to make a normal if statement. So what we want to do is we want to check the current shop. The reason that we're going to check the current shop is because that's going to give us whatever list that we're actually looping through and whatever the current item type we're using. And that's how we're actually going to adjust the info stat and the info price rather than looking into the multiplier and the food stat. So we're going to say if current shop equals, and then we're going to check if it's food, then now we want to set the info stat dot text. And we want to set that to the same thing that we have set down here. So we can just go ahead and copy and paste that directly into there. And then we also want to set the info price dot text to the same thing that we also have down here. So now food's all done. We don't have to worry about that. What we then want to check is if the current shop equals DNA. And if that does, then we want to set both of these text labels again, but of course for the correct stat. So instead of the plus symbol, which is representing the increase of food, we want to use the fry icon, which is going to represent increasing the max food. So remember the food 
items are going to increase your food stat, while the DNA items are going to increase the max amount of food that you can hold. Another thing is that I sort of forgot to change this right here. So right here we can see we're still using self.food, but of course that property doesn't exist anymore, and we replace that with stat. So now we're going to use stat instead of food to get the stat value of that item. And now that we have food and DNA out of the way, we have one more category left, and that is ranks. So we're going to kind of do the same thing. We can just copy and paste these down here. So we have the properties already. And of course, ranks is slightly different than the other two. Rather than setting the price in the actual price label, we are going to set that where the stat is usually at. So there's our price. And then for the price is where we sort of set the stat for the rank. And we already have the string created for the specific stat right there. So we can go ahead and copy this and paste it right where the price is at. And the final thing that we need to do is, of course, change multiplier to stat. Then we can go ahead and delete how we were previously setting these values. But now if we look below the lines that we just deleted, we can actually see the info warning dot visible is also using the multiplier property as well. Rather than using the multiplier property, we're going to go ahead and once again, use the current shop property. So we're going to say if current shop equals ranks, then we're going to set the info warning to true. Otherwise, it's going to be false. Let's go ahead and start up our game and see how the changes look. As long as it looks normal, then that's exactly what we want for the most part. So we can click on fry and we can see everything is generated as normal, which is good. We're not getting any errors. Then we look at DNA. We click on the item and we can see the icon has changed. And now instead of food, it says max, which is exactly how eating simulator does it. So that's great. And then if we look on ranks and click on ranks, we can now see the warning text pops up. We can see the money is at the top and we can also see the stats are displayed on the bottom. And that's exactly how eating simulator also has. It. Now there's a slight difference that I do want to point out. And we're also going to change as well in eating simulator. The stats for ranks is actually displayed slightly differently. So normally we align our stats to the left. And what I mean by that is you can easily see the price down here is aligned to the left. Otherwise it would be in the center or towards the right, but we set the alignment to the left. So when they display the rank stat, it's actually aligned in the center. And that's what we want to change now rather than having it aligned to the left. So underneath where we set the visibility of the info warning, we're going to create another if statement. So if current shop, and we're going to check if that equals ranks, if it does equal ranks, then what we want to do is we want to get the info price label and we want to set the text X alignment property to enum dot text x alignment dot center so that'll center the stats although i know it might be a little bit confusing because we named this info price but remember for ranks that is where the stats are displayed so then we'll center the text otherwise what we want to do is we of course want to reset it back to the left alignment now if you didn't realize already considering how we set the visibility we can also just set the visibility inside of this if statement as well and i feel like that keeps it a little bit more organized so if the current shop is ranks we want to set the visibility to true for the info warning otherwise we are going to make that not visible and then we could, of course, delete that right there. And there we go. There's one more way that we can slightly improve our code. And what I'm talking about is we have the if current shop equals ranks, and we're already sort of checking that up here. What we could do is rather than having another if statement, we can put this inside of here. And of course, this else is pretty much equal to current shop equals ranks. So that'll handle that. And then what we could do with the else statement right here is you might think we would paste it in both the food and DNA. But rather than doing that, we could just set this above that. So every single time, the click method is called, it's going to set the price text alignment to the left. And it'll also make the info warning not visible. But if the current shop is ranks, then it will change those properties back to what they should be for that specific item type. So we can go ahead and delete that if statement. Now, if you'd rather have this if statement than have it mixed in with this, you can definitely do that too. It's whatever you feel more comfortable with. I just wanted to show you all the options that we had. Once again, though, we can go into our shop and make sure that it looks all good. So we can see all of the different items and stats are displayed as they should be for food. Let's go ahead and check DNA and we can see DNA is displayed as it should be. And finally ranks, we can see that the text is aligned in the center rather than being on the left, which is exactly what we want. And we can see that looks all good as well. Perfect. Now, the only other noticeable adjustment that I saw that I wanted to make is if we go inside of the info frame, we can locate the warning label and let's make this visible for a second so that we can actually see it. And as we see, it definitely overlaps the stats frame, which could be kind of ugly. There are a lot of ways that we could go about adjusting this. We could make the stats frame slightly smaller. We can make the item name slightly smaller. We could make the warning smaller, but I think that's the worst idea because it would become super small. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the image 
image label and the viewport frame. And actually I'll make these both visible, although one of them already is, and we'll make them a little bit smaller. So I think that's good. That gives us a little bit room to move the item name up a little bit. We can then move the warning up a little bit. And now it's no longer going into the stats frame, but it is pretty small. Let's go ahead and make the image label and viewport frame not visible once again, so that we can go ahead and test this out. And let's see what it looks like in game. It looks pretty small. I'm not going to lie. We could try to increase the size slightly. So I did increase the size slightly. So now when we look at it, actually, it looks pretty good. I'm not going to lie. That actually looks really good for the most part. I don't like how close it is to the item name. I mean, they're practically touching, but at the same time, at least it's not too small. Okay. I think I found a good size and position for this. So the size that I found that was good was 0.07. And then the position was 0.445. Now I don't really want to further discuss the warning label because this clearly can be changed to however you actually want it. And we could continue to go so far into it and do a lot of stuff, but it's really not that important. And I feel like that's a decision that you guys can make on your own after seeing the things that I tried to do with it. Earlier when we changed the stats on each of the config files, we actually forgot to update another file that used the specific food stat. Now, the way that I figured this out was by going into our game, equipping our item and actually trying to earn points. And you can see that we now have an error being thrown in the console. So the error is being caused inside of the tool manager, which is inside of the server script service. So we can go inside of the tool manager and we can quickly and easily see that right here, we are using the food property, which no longer exists. And remember, we changed the food property from food to stat. So once we change that to stat, we should now have no issues when we do try to earn money from using our item. And we can see that has now been fixed. And we're now earning points as we should be. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for this episode. Hopefully it helps you guys out. If it did, make sure you smash the like button. Also hit the subscribe button and turn those post notifications on if you guys did enjoy and you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I do have a Patreon. If you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I made in this episode, there's a link down below in the description and you guys can go check that out. With that being said, I hope that you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next episode.